I just want to spend a little bit of time about virtual sensor licensing. So I'm on the main licensing page in the uh, Defense Center GUI. And one thing to note about the virtual sensor is that unlike physical sensors, you don't apply the license on the sensor itself. You actually apply it on the Defense Center just like you do with a feature license such as with RNA or RUA. Uh, so as you, uh, you uh, add the license here using this feature, um, when you're done, you will see here in the section called 3D Virtual Sensor Licenses what licenses you have applied to your DC. Um, you'll see uh, some quantity of, of allowed sensors, so however many virtual sensors you, you, you've licensed, you'll see that quantity here. Here it's one, um, but it can be any, any number. And then you'll also see a throughput number here, so it just happens to be 500 megabit uh, sensors, but it could be uh, a different number. It could be uh, 45 or 100 or 250 or whatever. Um, so that's pretty much which one to look for. So it is pretty straightforward. Just think of virtual sensor licenses as feature licenses similar to what we do with RNA or RUA. So I just wanted to end with a few troubleshooting tips. Uh, so one of the uh, things you might run into is not finding the right options in VMware. So for instance, you might be here and thinking, well, where is my uh, configuration tab so I can get into the, the networking options? Well. Uh, the problem is uh, it's all about what you've actually selected on this left side. So if you select a VM, you're not going to see configuration for the ESX server. The only way you'll do that uh, is to actually um, click on the uh, ESX host itself. You'll notice the options are changed, and then all these different tabs change. Same thing if um, if you're if you're editing a VM, and you try to create a new VM, you're not going to be able to. Uh, you have to go to the uh, ESX server first. Uh, the other uh, thing to keep in mind here is. Uh, is your your VM settings so make sure uh, that your uh, like I said before uh, that your different uh, NICs are enabled uh, they're, they're set to connected and connected power on um, otherwise they won't uh, actually provide connectivity uh, the other thing is about make sure that your physical interfaces on your ESX host are connected um, to the right interfaces so um, if you're trying to talk with an outside network make sure um, that connectivity is in place if you're uh, monitoring traffic from the outside world via span or uh, via tap, make sure uh, that your uh, uh, that your you've got the right span port or the right taps connected physically. Uh, one thing you can also do is make sure that your virtual sensor is is monitoring traffic. So what you can do is you can either um, open a console window or a SSH into the sensor. I have a console window here, and uh, uh, so you want to know what interface you're using to to monitor traffic, so you can do a PS, PS and grep for snort. And you'll note here you want, you want to look for the uh, for the dash I here, and it says uh, interface is FP1. Um, so what you can do is just you can do a TCT dump on interface FP1. And you'll note here there is traffic, so uh, I can be confident that this interface is actually seeing the traffic. So um, if you can do that, then the next step is to uh, go to the other SourceFire uh, specific options, such as uh, making sure that your licenses are applied, your, all your de detection engines are created, um, your IPS and RNA policies have been applied, um, that you synchronize your, your time um, between your sensor and your DC and all those sort of things. So that's uh, it for this uh, quick take. So um, thanks a lot for your time. If you have any questions, you can always consult your, uh, your installation guide for Virtual Defense Center or uh, Sensor, or you can contact support. Thanks again.